Welcome to this video lecture. My name is Samir and today we will be doing some idioms in IELTS speaking module or any day to day routine. Now the idioms, these are basically required in IELTS speaking exam and they are flexible resources. This is your third marking criteria in IELTS speaking module. Now I'm not going to say that we have to use many proverbs into our IELTS speaking module, no, but at least two or three idiomatic uh, phrases you should be using in order to increase your band score. Right? If we closely look at the marking criteria of our speaking module in lexical resources number three clause, you will be seeing that our student has used unfamiliar idiomatic language. Right? Like I said, uh, we will be only practicing couple, but I will be definitely recommending you to use at least two or three. Okay? I will be today doing a slideshow and we will be going through each and every idiom in detail. We will also make a couple of sentences to make you understand correctly. All right, let's start. Hi, let's start doing the idioms now. All right, so I have speaking module, some miscellaneous idioms. Now, why to use idiom? Because they are counted in lexical resources. That's the third criteria in IELTS speaking module. Now in the first clause, you get point from zero to three. Now every criteria like pronunciation, fluency and coherence, lexical resources, grammatical range accuracy, all these four different categories are sub divided into three different clauses. And they are being for, you know, like given points from zero to three. Over here, as you can see, the three points are in lexical resource, paraphrase the question, which means a student is paraphrasing the question continuously. So he's not repeating the question content, right? For example, do you like reading books? Yes, I like reading books because this enhances my reading uh, speed. Now this is known as paratic, so you did not paraphrase anything, right? Do you like reading books? Yes, I do. In fact, uh, I do it very often in order to keep enhancing my reading speed. Now over here, you did not repeat any question, so that is fine, that is good thing. You know, you just gave a response by saying, yes, I do, because the question started from do you, right? Or you can simply say that, do you like reading books? Yes, I'm very fond of reading novels. In fact, I have a small library into customized library built in my room where I have more than 20 books. Uh, majority of them are from Rabindranath Tagore. Right, so this is how you can just paraphrase the question, use some expressions and do, you know, like to keep your st uh, stretching your own speaking. Now, second clause is using vocabulary resources appropriately. So obviously when you're using any C2 based vocabulary, right? Now that is of ad advanced level, but you're only required to use three or four words. But remember, it needs to be placed in sentences appropriately, which means pro with proper collocations. Okay. The third is using less common and idiomatic vocabulary skillfully. Now it means less common. So we're not going to use any kind of, you know, very common idiom like piece of cake. Or it was simply like piece of cake for me. It was just cup of coffee, cup of tea. You know, these are very common idioms. So we're going to use some like unfamiliar ones. All right, let's start. Hard feelings. Now hard feelings means the emotion of being upset or offended. For example, after graduation ceremony, I had no hard feelings of separating from my mates because I was just too determined for my career, you know, right? So we can simply say, now I know that many people might be telling you that we can't use, you know, yes, you can. Okay. Don't listen to nobody. Just remember, this is a speaking module. I mean, you're only required to speak of your, with your own confidence. It's not that you can't use this. You can't use that. No, no. think about like how you can communicate with a person. How your intonations are wearing, that's how you gain more bands. Rather than, you know, like sounding something like crammed and speaking, for example, you know, do you like reading? Yes, I like reading because uh, I am very fond of reading books, especially of Ramindranath Tagore. Uh, and I have, in fact, a, a small library built in my room. Now, see how the sound is not varying and it's just going constant. That is what examiner will understand that you have actually practiced your response. On the other hand, if you choose to say, oh, yes, absolutely, indeed, I am, you know, like, in, in fact, I'm very fond of reading novels, especially of Rabindranath Tagore. I have uh, even, you won't believe, you know, a small customized library built in my room where I have over 20 books, I guess, of him. Right. So this is how it's showing that you're speaking naturally. Okay. So hard feelings after graduation ceremony. Now from graduation, I just remember one thing. Now, uh, many students, they say like you, are you studying or working? 
Sometimes students say, you know, like uh, I'm doing graduation. You're not doing graduation. Graduation basically means the date on which you receive your degree or diploma certificate. Okay. When you are, what you're doing now, I'm graduate, I'm graduation, I'm in my graduation, I'm graduating. You're not graduating. Okay. You can say that I'm graduate. That's because you have already received your certificate. You can search on google.com, just put down graduation. You will see the graduation basically just means the date on which your ceremony is going to be held. After doing my graduation, I did my master's. No, after becoming graduate, I did my master's. That is the appropriate sentence, right? Just remember now in order to speak an appropriate sentence, you have to be using like, you know, you'll be using after becoming graduate. I did my master's after becoming graduate. I went here. I did this. Right. The next against the clock against the clock means doing something very fast and finishing it before a certain time given. For example, do you like reading? Well, reading has always been my passion. You know, I always go against the clock in order to keep improving my reading speed. It also induces confidence in me. Right. So what kind of person are you? Well, I, I consider myself as a hard worker. Now, that is only because um, being a self-employed. You know, I have a business of uh, manufacturing some electronic goods and I always try to go against the clock in order to enhance my productivity. These kind of sentences you can make. Next, come rain or shine. It means that something will happen regardless of weather or any other difficulty. Right. So, for example, I have always been a dedicated student. Come rain or shine, I never miss out any classes of mine. Right. Where mine is underlined, it means that my classes of my classes, I never miss out. Okay. For example, if you're in a business of delivering products like Flipkart and all, you know, you ring a Flipkart guy, can you please deliver this product uh, tomorrow? I really urgently need it. It's okay, sir. No, no worries at all. You know, come rain or shine, I'll definitely be delivering your product tomorrow by five o'clock. Right. That's how you can use this idiom. Next is in deep water. In deep water means when you're in big trouble, as the you know, like the expression suggests you. I remember when I was giving my 10th board exam, I got so nervous that I started to feel that I'm not going to pass my test and will be in deep water. But thanks to the teacher who was on duty, she gave me a glass of water and patted me on my back to make me get relaxed. Right? So this is how you can use an idiom in deep water. It means in deep trouble. If I don't reach my office at in the right time, I will be in deep water because my boss is going to scold me or maybe I get sacked. Right, I get fired. You can use that. Go an extra mile. Went gone. That you know, like you can. It depends on the tense which you are speaking. Go an extra mile means doing something more than required. You know, like out of your own ability. So, for example, on birthdays, I can say my parents for the first time went an extra mile on my recent birthday, surprising me with a lot of arrangements, threw a massive party, as well as plenty of gifts, including a beautiful golden retriever pup. They made that day as my most unforgettable one. Right. I hope it's clear. Go an extra mile. You can also say, you know, I'm a very kind and humble person. I always try to go an extra mile in order to lend a helping hand to poor and needy people because that doing that thing always provides me inner satisfaction or peace, whichever you want to say. Right. Now let's go. Found or find my feet. According to the tense, you can switch on to find, found or find, right? You can also use the giant form. Finding my feet means that to become comfortable in doing something, right? Do you work or study? Well, I'm doing neither of these at present. I'm only assisting my family members in some household chores, like getting stuff from the market and all, and all I have replaced with and all, right? So just for the pronunciation, I'm, I have written and all. Right? And sometimes hang out with my mates. Moreover, I'm also planning for uh, I'm also planning to go abroad for my higher education. Although I know it is going to be a bit difficult to settle in new environment, but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to find my feet there. I'm pretty sure I will be feeling comfortable there. Next, over the moon. Over the moon means when you're extremely happy or pleased. Right. So. Remember, with this expression, you have to show the examiner because you don't know whether he knows that idiom or not. So you have to give him some kind of idea that you're using this expression in which context. 
Well, as you can see here, well, happiness comes every now and then. But when we hear extraordinary news, then that happiness gets on another level. I vividly, means clearly, I vividly remember the moment I got news about one of my best mates, blessed with twins, a boy and a girl. I felt like over the moon because she faced some problems in conceiving before. Right? So this is how, now as you have seen that, you know, like I made a situation where I told the examiner that, you know, like she, my good friend, she faced a couple of uh, problems in terms of conceiving before. But now, you know, thanks to God uh, and uh, also, you know, the efforts which we, they both have been doing, you know, her husband also, they, they have been blessed with twins, boy and a girl. So how much happiness, you know, one get get. So that's where I use the expression over the moon. Over the moon, now that's his happiness. This is once in blue moon means something happens very rare. Very rare, remember, okay? Just not like uh, only kade kade, right? Kade kade apa ni kaya na? Apa kaya na? Baut hi rare hon diya, right? So for example, uh, do you like cooking? Well, frankly saying, now this expression, frankly speaking, frankly saying, honestly saying, honestly speaking, yes, you can use them, okay? But not too often, remember, I would definitely say use whichever you, whatever you want to use, but try to, you know, avoid repeating it over and over again because you just want to show the variety to the examiner that you know many things in English. And these expressions, they just reflect in the, you know, like the real English speaking. For example, listen, <clears throat> so do you like cooking? Well, frankly saying, I'm a person who never quits learning, right? who never quits learning cooking, but somehow I just can't get the taste which is required. It's just so difficult to match quantity of raw material with spices. It only happens once in blue moon that my dishes come up to near expectations. Right? Or you can say, well, you know, I am a very lazy person. Uh, it really, you know, like I, whenever I need to go to university, I always tend to sleep and I feel like, you know, I will just wake up after half an hour, half an hour, another half an hour. And this is how, you know, the day started passing by. It only happens once in blue moon when I'm able to wake up at six o'clock in the morning and I do my regular activities. Right. So we can use like that also. All right. A penny saved this penny earned. Now it's a pretty common one. Like it is more important to save money rather than spending it. I have a motorbike and my personal car to drive, but I still prefer my bicycle for nearby places. After all, a penny saved this penny earned. Moreover, pedaling helps in preserving environment also and keep me fit. Right? You can also use in the IELTS speaking module, there's a topic, uh, you know, like introduction only. Then let's talk about saving money. So do you like to save money? Yes, absolutely. It, now there's a story behind it, you know, like ever from a childhood, my mother has always been inducing, you know, like this lesson into my mind that a penny saved is penny in. So this, although at young age, you know, I was trying to collect as much as I can because at that time pocket money was very less, but I'm actually surprised that after a couple of years, I was able to save up to you know, like around four or 5,000. And today I realize that how big amount I was able to save back in childhood. Right. So you can just stretch your answers like that. The next action speaks louder than words. It means actions are more important than words. Which means that, you know, like how, you know, like how politicians always say that we will do this, I will do this. If you vote me, I will do this, I will do that. They just don't know, you know, the actions are better than the words. So although our politic politicians give very positive speeches all year round, but they fail to understand that actions speak louder than words. So I always keep myself away from politics. Okay. Now, beat around the bush. Beat around the bush means to waste time in order to avoid answering questions. This is a very uncommon idiom and can be used in like anywhere. You just want to avoid yourself from answering questions, whether you have been scolded from your family members or from your teachers. But here I made an example. Well, when I was living in a joint family, coming back home late night was a big deal at my home. I always used to get scolded from a grandmother. I remember most of the times I used to beat around the bush from numerous questions of her and wait till she's done asking so that I can go and sleep. Right. So I hope that's clear. Can't judge a book by its cover. Now that's a pretty common one. No, don't, judge, don't judge someone from outer appearance. I remember I went to the party two months ago and saw a lady dressed in pathetic outfits. She was wearing to me what looked like pajamas with a very cheap quality cropped up having lints on it. Lints means boo. 
right? Now, when I asked around, I was amazed to know that she is the CEO of a multinational company located in New Delhi. I realized then and there that sometimes we can't just judge a book by its cover. All right. And next, the in thing, something that is very popular and usually temporarily. Okay. For example, iPhones, we can say, you know, I do remember back then when the iPhone was introduced into the market, it became the in thing, right? But now it's pretty common. Okay, so similarly here I made an example. Well, bell bottom, well, wearing bell bottom pants once again have become the in thing. Though I don't know for how many days or months is going to last, but I'm definitely going to get one of those. Right. Next, drink like a fish. It means that you know, like you're drinking water a lot. For example, how's the weather in your country? Well, it varies. Now, whenever this question comes, how's the weather in the country? It means they are asking you generally. How's the weather in your country? So your response has to stop it. Well, it varies because it's varying. You know, it's some, sometimes the weather is hot. Sometimes the weather is cold. Remember, the weather is hot and cold. It's not summer and winter. Summer and winter are the season. Right? So how's the weather in a country? Well, it varies. It gets boiling hot from mid-May till July. Temperature reaches even till 47 to 49 degrees during daytime. The best thing to kill dehydration is to drink water like a fish. Contrarily, it gets freezing cold from mid-December to January, where the temperature drops to four degrees even, especially at night time. Right, so this is how you can stretch your responses. Every cloud has a silver lining, means hard times are not forever. They will end eventually. I used to be quite weak in mathematics back in school. Two times I failed in year nine, so I couldn't sit in next term with my batchmates, you know. Although I tried my best, but luck was just not with me. I always believed in an old saying that every cloud has a silver lining. So I didn't give up and appeared confidently in third exam. Luckily, I got a grade and was promoted. Right now, for example, these days, you know how we are facing pandemic situation and there is quite a lot of appalling conditions of humanity. Right? So we can use this idiom also here, like every cloud has a silver lining. So for example, we can make a sentence like, you know, these days, the people of my country, you know, are going through appalling conditions. But every cloud has a silver lining. As soon as the vaccination comes, you know, it will be all over and we'll be start leading a good lifestyle again. Right. So let bygones be bygones means to forget past differences and conflicts. What you don't like in your friend, there was one thing which always used to upset me about Chris. He was always ready to quarrel at silly things. Finally, we once sat together and shook our hands, put, putting all the bitterness behind and let bygones be bygones. We made a fresh start all over again. Now he's one of my best mates, right? So to forget the past differences when you know, like when you have a misunderstanding between your friends and you want to get rid of it and become good friends again. So what you have, you can do is, you know, sit together, talk about it. You know, so which means that bygones be bygones, right? Next is new kid on the block. Now someone who is in a new place or an organization has many things to learn about it. Now people who have been trying to improve their English linguistics, why? Right? Because they are new kid on the block. Okay, I'm currently pursuing English linguistic skills from a private institute in my city. Realizing I'm the new kid on the block in this course, I'm determined to prove myself. Right? I am very positive in order to prove myself. The next is off the hook. Off the hook means when you are freed from an obligation, right? So if somebody, you know, like put a charge on you, somebody like uh, give a comment on you that he did that, you know, who broke the window, he did that, but you didn't actually, right? So you can explain your thing to the person concerned and you can say, you know, like I felt off the hook, which is I was freed from the obligation. Now, how do you get along with your family members? Well, they all love me a lot. I'm the most adorable child among two of us. Although I do some crazy things sometimes, which make them upset or even get mad at me, but I get away free and consider myself off the hook. Right. The next cost an arm and leg. Cost an arm and a leg means something very expensive. Now, when you're going for shopping, sometimes, you know, you I, I'm a person who doesn't like to spend too much. I remember vividly, you know, like two weeks ago, I went with my brother and to the showroom and I saw this one beautiful sculpture 
but when I read the price of that, it costs and it costed an arm and a leg. Right. So we just thought to buy it, but then later on we decided not to go with it because I know that my mother is not going to be happy with our purchase. Right. Over here, I've given an example when I'm currently preparing to go abroad for my higher education. Although it's gonna cost me an arm and a leg, which means although going abroad is going to cost me expensive, right? So although it's gonna cost me an arm and leg to be there, but I know it's going to be worth since this opportunity can be a breakthrough for my future. It means it's going to give me a very positive result for in my future. Right, next is stop ironing my head means stop annoying me. So next time someone is annoying you, just tell them to stop ironing your head. Okay, you know, when you're sitting uh, in a room and somebody just knocked on the door and tell you, hey, I want to talk to you, but you don't feel like talking to a robot. He's just annoying you. So you, instead of saying, hey, man, please stop annoying me. Rather than that, you can just say, please stop ironing my head. Right? Now here example, honestly saying I'm kind of jolly. Kind of means kind of, right? Honestly saying I'm kind of jolly means that I'm a very fun loving person, right? So honestly saying, I'm kind of jolly and don't really like people who keeps ironing my head, you see. It's just, they make me feel blue sometimes. Feel blue means depress. Okay, remember blue will always be, uh, you will always be using blue with the collocation feel. Right? I feel blue. For example, does weather affect your mood? Oh yes, it does. Whenever, whenever the weather is gloomy, I feel blue. However, whenever it's bright sunny day, I feel elated, right? Gloomy, gloomy means, you know how the weather sometimes is dark and it's just dull. The dull weather, what it does, it makes you depressed, right? So the dull weather, we use the word gloomy. Feel blue is depressed, elated, happiness. Okay, so once again, whenever the weather is gloomy, I feel blue, however, whenever it's Bright sunny day, then I feel elated. Right, I hope it's clear. Stop ironing my head. Next is emit smoke from seven orifices. It sounds as orifices. Okay, emit smoke. Now, sub, you know, like seven from seven, uh, you know, the points you're getting smoke out. So, which means, you know, you're extremely angry. You know how sometimes you must have seen him on television and old movies sometimes, you know, a person gets angry, the smoke starts to come out from his ears, right? So ears, now these two holes. Now here we are talking about seven orifices. So obviously extremely angry. Well, I'm a person who likes to stay calm and relaxed, although there are some circumstances which makes me emit smoke from seven orifices. So during that time, I prefer to be alone. Now remember the actual pronunciation of prefer is prefer, not prefer. Why? Next is see eye to eye. See eye to eye means when you're agreeing with someone. Why? Right? I don't generally see eye to eye until I get my facts cleared after delving into the conversation. Delve means when you're going in depth, trying to recover some information. Right? But remember these idioms are only for speaking, okay? Don't use them for writing task two or task one at all because those that particular module requires you to write formal only, not informal. Right? And these are informals. So to see eye to eye, for example, exam said, do you think that children should be allowed to use mobile phone? Yes, I see eye to eye. Right? I don't generally see eye to eye until I get my facts clear after delving into the conversation. And the last is to cut corners. To cut corners means to do something badly or cheaply. Right. So, you know, like how sometimes you tell someone that, uh, you know, don't buy this cheap product. It is not good for you. It's not going to last for long. So that's why, you know, like we, I've made a sentence, like my mate bought a Chinese phone, which broke down within three days of purchase. I told him not to cut corners, but what to do? It's his nature, not listen to nobody. Right now, cut corners. I hope it's understood like something very bad or cheaply, you know, like you, uh, he just, he's cutting corners all the time. So he's doing something bad, you know, he's doing something cheaply. Right. For example, you can also say, well, you know, like uh, I had plumbers at my home doing the, uh, you know, like fitting inside my washroom, but because of some reason I had to go. When I came back, I realized, you know, they just cut the corners. Now it's leaking. The taps are leaking. Right. So this is how you can just use uh, your idioms. Okay.
All right. I hope that you really enjoy doing those idioms. Now, I will definitely recommend you to practice some sentences on it. Now, uh, as you must have written already these idioms, uh, now what you can do is just make at least two or three sentences based on each idiom. Write on your own and speak as much as you can because once you get the flow going onto your speech, then it will be a lot more easier to vary your intonations also by using those idioms. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good day.